Hi there, and welcome to the Paula Fiscal Show. We have a very special guest today, and as you know, this is the political season, and we have Sigrid Elizabeth Arias, who is running for Superior Court Judge. Now, for those of you that are not from San Francisco, you may not realize that we have a primary election, and that will be held in June. Now, for this primary election, there will be more than one candidate running for this position. And on my show here, we want you to stay informed. So my show runs on Sundays at 3 o'clock p.m. on Channel 29 and 76. I also upload the shows to YouTube, and I send it out on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and also on a separate Facebook page, Paula Fiscal Show. So thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to start out this interview with candidate Sigrid Elizabeth Arias by her telling us what in the world or how in the world she decided she needed to run for this position. Welcome. Thank you, Paula. It's really an honor to be here. Um, I'm so pleased that people are interested in this judicial race. A lot of times it's something that's buried at the bottom of the ballot. Um, and that's in part because we hardly ever have elections for a judge. Usually elections are for the Board of Supervisors, or this time we've got presidential choices. Usually when it comes to judges, the governor of the state of California makes the appointments. So it's a rare time when you have an open seat on the San Francisco Superior Court bench where no judge is a sitting or an incumbent judge and lawyers in the community who are interested in running for the position can de decide to do that. When this open seat came up, as has always been the case when there's an open seat that comes up for election, there was a very short window of time for anyone who was interested in running to run. And I received a couple of phone calls from people I respect very much who said, Sigrid, the seat is going to be open. This judge is retiring. We really think you should run. You would be a great judge. Um, and they knew that I had never run for office before. I am definitely not a politician. Um, but one of them said, I think you'll actually even like the campaign process, which is actually to my um, immense uh, joy has turned out to be true. I have really loved meeting the people of San Francisco in a way that I would not have had the opportunity to do had I not gotten involved in this campaign. And so when you decided to run for office, you had to plunk down some money for the fee or and you also had to get uh, how many signatures to get on the ballot? So I did the calculation of how many signatures it would have required for me to get in a very short window of time to avoid the filing fee and came to the conclusion that the only realistic option was to pay the filing fee, which I think was a couple of thousand dollars. It's a serious commitment for someone who wants to decide to run. Um, and on the topic of finances, I think I am running one of the most lean campaigns ever known, but it's, there are still costs that are unavoidable. Not only the filing fee initially, but I had not realized as a voter up until now that those candidate statements that you read are not printed for free. The candidates have to pay to, to have their candidate statement listed in your voter pamphlet. Which explains why sometimes there's very short candidate statements. <laughs> but I happen to have your candidate statement right here. And it takes up a good amount of the page. Now, what I want to do here is so that I know it's difficult for a candidate to talk about themselves. So I wanted to give just a little briefing about uh, your background. It says that your father immigrated from Nicaragua and that you've done quite a bit of pro bono work, and it's included representing children facing deportation, which is a topic that's uh, very near and dear to all of our hearts in San Francisco. And you're also helping Mission District residents avoid eviction. You've been a past president and general counsel of the San Francisco La Raza Lawyers Association. 
and you led its effort to support California's first recognized undocumented lawyer. So over the 20 years you've been, over 20 years you've been with one of San Francisco's most respected law firms, and you're also a volunteer judge pro tem. Now, you've handled juvenile traffic and eviction cases, and I wanted to talk a bit about your supporters. So tell us about your supporters. So my supporters include, other than the, the ones most obvious, my family, who I consulted before getting into this judicial campaign, they include people that I really um, respect highly, including some of the judges that I've appeared before. Long before I got into this judicial election race, I had submitted an application to the governor's office for an appointment. And that was done at the encouragement of lawyers that I'd known and at the encouragement in particular of a judge that I'd tried a case in front of who suggested that I pursue um, service on, on a long-term basis as a judge and ask the governor if he would appoint me. So my endorsers include those. They include also Cruz Reynoso. A couple of years ago I left the larger law firm that I had been working for for a long time and opened my own sole practice. Cruz um, did me the great honor of becoming of counsel to the firm. I had known him for a long time before that and we had become actually good friends. We are on the board of a nonprofit together. He is one of the founders of San Francisco La Raza Lawyers Association, which is how I first came to know him was through that organization. So Cruz Reynoso, who was of course on the California Supreme Court and now teaches at the University of California at Davis at the law school and does so many other things I could not even begin to list them. He is currently a member of the Blue Ribbon Commission that is looking at some of the issues with the San Francisco Police Department. Um, other endorsers, I could go on and on, but well, some Well, I have a list. I just <laughs> okay. happen to have a list here. Honorable Alex Saldamando. He is terrific. He was on the San Francisco Superior Court, and I tried a, a long case in front of him. And we also have a favorite here, Justice Maria P. Rivera. Now, as a judge, are they allowed to endorse? Judges actually are allowed to endorse if they are California state court judges. Federal judges are not permitted to endorse, but there are rules of ethics that apply to the state court judges and rules that apply to the federal judges. State court judges are allowed to endorse those who are running for judicial office. Interestingly enough, neither judges nor candidates for a position as judge can endorse people running for supervisor. They can't endorse um, or sponsor legislation, and this is because judges can't take positions on issues or legislation that might come before the court. Well, a couple of other good names here, Judge Paul H. Alvarado, Tom Amiano. Yes, I'm very pleased to have uh, Tom Amiano's endorsement. He is absolutely fabulous and obviously very well known for his work in San Francisco. And it's significant that you get endorsers and supporters of well-known names in the community because that influences and encourages other people to vote for you. So let me just go through a few more of the names here that I know personally, on a personal basis. Francisco Cancino, Cancino regional attorney. Yes, I've known Francisco for many years and I'm very honored and my heart is warmed by his endorsement. We go back a long way and he is a terrific person if you know him. And yes, and Francisco is well known for having pointed out to some of our elected governors that uh, Latinos are somehow somewhat underrepresented on the bench. That continues to be something that as a legal community I think we're working towards. As the uh, president of San Francisco La Raza Lawyers, I definitely uh, was involved in the organization's efforts to advocate for increased representation on the bench by Latinos, and not only on the bench, but in other appointed positions. Um, as a co-chair of the Minority Bar Coalition, we have continued to do that, and I have had the pleasure and honor of getting to know many of the other lawyers who are involved in minority bar associations, including black women lawyers of Northern California, the South Asian Bar Association, the Filipino Bar Association. There are a number of well over 20 minority bar associations in the San Francisco Bay Area that I have had the honor of helping coordinate activities for over the last couple of years as co-chair of the 
Minority Bar Coalition. And do some of these organizations endorse? They bring you in, you have a candidate's night, you talk about it. I would have one in particular here at the front of me that I wanted to mention is the Queen's Bench. Talk about that one. That is the Queen's Bench Bar Association is the bar association for women in the San Francisco Bay Area in particular. There are enough women lawyers now that we not only have the Queen's Bench, which was founded a very long time ago to provide a bar association for women back when women were not quite so well accepted into the all-male bar associations. We have the California Women Lawyers Association. California Women Lawyers does not do endorsements, um, but the Queen's Bench does. And in order to conclude who they wanted to endorse in this election campaign, they held a panel where all of the candidates participated, and it was attended by attorneys, by at least one judge um, that I saw there. And we had a question and answer format so that the members of the Queen Bench could get to know the candidates before they concluded who they wanted to endorse. The uh, amount of, of advertising that you need to do to run for an office like this is phenomenal. And uh, a big chunk of your money goes just in putting out the signs, just in making the signs and, and the, the ink. And right. uh, so I know that it is a uh, new experience for you running for office, and, but you're holding up very well. And many of the judges that um, have endorsed you say you have just the perfect temperament to be on the bench. Now, I want to go back just a little bit to more of the names. I'm picking out my favorites. All right. I've got another name here by the name of John Trevenia, <laughs> Dean, USF School of Law, former Assistant Secretary for Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity in the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, former President and General Counsel of the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Now, I must tell you that I met John Trezvina years ago while I was working as an aide for Carol Ruth Silver. He was actually one of my interns. Oh, boy. Yes. And so tell us about uh, the endorsement from John, because I know that he is very, very particular about who he endorses. Well, John Trasvina, I personally met around the time that he came back to the Bay Area and took on the post of being dean at the School of Law out at the University of San Francisco. And I had already been involved um, with the law students at USF School of Law, in particular the La Raza law students out there, um, because of my work in mentorship programs with San Francisco La Raza lawyers. And I think my getting to know John was associated with that. The law students invited me a few years ago to go out and be their graduation um, keynote speaker for the La Raza Law Students graduation. And I have continued to be um, in touch with the school that way. In fact, long before I filed to run in this particular election, the students contacted me again, and I will be the keynote for the La Raza graduation at USF again. Well, that's next wonderful, week. wonderful yes. news. Now, there's another organization here of note. South Asian Bar Association of Northern California. I know many of the attorneys from the South Asian Bar Association um, because we've worked together on projects and have been mutually supportive uh, of events related to mentorship, to issues in the community for many years. And obviously, I'm very um, flattered, honored, and grateful that they are endorsing me in this campaign as well. And is there anyone that you would like to mention in particular that has been very supportive, has worked with you a little extra, and you want to give a shout out to? I have to give a shout out to my campaign do it all person, um, Jimmy Lee, who's an attorney who I worked with for a very long time. And when this campaign came up, jumped into it with both feet to be a help. And he has been a tremendous support has done more things to help on the campaign that I could have ever anticipated he would have to do. And I think he is doing more than he anticipated as well, and with um, very good heart and has been a huge support. Well, that's what happens when you run for <laughs> office. You get your supporters from the most unlikely places, and they step forward. They help you do everything that needs to get done. Now, I also see another name here, Judge Gerardo Sandoval, who is a good politician. Judge, he endorsed you. <laughs> Judge Sandoval did endorse me, and he is an enthusiastic supporter and has been 
uh, from the time that this election campaign started has been a big boost that way. Um, Judge Daniel Flores is also um, has been wonderful in terms of his moral support and encouragement for me to do this. Yes, when Daniel started running, he was a novice, and now he's an old pro. Yeah, and uh, he's done a, a very fine job, and and he did a lot of legwork, which is what it's going to take to get elected in this city. You just have to keep walking and keep walking. Now, speaking of walking, if if it's a segue at all. Uh, the San Francisco Tenants Union also endorsed you. The San Francisco Tenants Union did endorse me, and I have gotten to know many of the lawyers who do work for tenants on in the city because I've been a pro tem or a temporary judge um, volunteering out at the San Francisco Superior Court in the unlawful detainer department, which is where there are lawsuits, typically eviction cases by landlords brought against tenants, and that calendar, as you probably will not be surprised to hear, is very crowded these days in San Francisco. So I had gotten to know many of the lawyers who do pro bono or who work with nonprofits on behalf of tenants out there in the court, and I believe that's what brought that endorsement about. And let's also drop, name drop, <laughs> now that we're doing name dropping, let's talk about John O'Grady. <laughs> John O'Grady is someone that I met through the Bar Association of San Francisco, and he's been a big supporter. He is, in fact, co-hosting an event tonight to a, uh, that's a fundraiser for the campaign. And, of course, you have to have many, many fundraisers, and you're going to many events. Have you found um, there's been a lot of coordinating and, and cross-marketing and, and uh, where you can go to an event and maybe there's two or three different people that are being endorsed and, and supported? You know, I have learned a lot about campaigning and politics in San Francisco since I started this campaign. It is not unusual at all to go to any particular event, and there, especially in this particular race, there will be at least three or four, if not more, people who are involved in campaigning for other candidates or for other propositions that are going to be on the ballot who will be there. We have a lot of people who are personally running as candidates and there are a lot of ballot measures. I will also say it's interesting to go out. I'm doing a lot of what you talked about, the walking around, meeting people in the community, spending a lot of time at transit stops, at BART stations, and it is not unusual that there will be someone else out there campaigning for something on the same bus stop. So it is definitely the election season in San Francisco. And doing the um, outreach to voters, then you have to select where you're going to be standing, which groups you're going to go to, and uh, if you, you have an opportunity to talk to a thousand people at once, it's always helpful. And uh, I see here also that you have the endorsement of Jose Padilla, the executive director of the California Rural Legal Assistance. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So Jose Padilla is endorsing me individually. Um, the CRLA does not do endorsements. Jose Padilla is someone that I've known for many years, again, through San Francisco La Raza lawyers. He has been a, a big supporter of the mentorship program that we've had at San Francisco La Raza Lawyers. And there are uh, so many young law students and new attorneys who have really benefited from the opportunity to meet him at the events that we've had that he has very graciously come to frequently. That's wonderful. Now, let's go back to the campaign and what you have to do to get elected. Because I touched on it briefly when I introduced you. But the bottom line is that of all the candidates, one candidate, if this candidate comes up with over 50 percent of the electorate, then there won't be a runoff in November? That is true. If someone gets over 50 percent, then there will not be a runoff. And if nobody gets over 50 percent, only the top two that will is, be in the runoff. That is correct. So have there been any polls out? Are there any, any uh, early polls? So I have not heard of any polls. And of course, being new to the whole campaign process, I asked people I knew who'd been involved with other judicial races, do they do polls for these races? And the consensus seemed to be that generally they're not done because they're so expensive and these races happen so fast. The candidates for this judicial election only filed their papers in February, and the election date is June 7th. That's a very short period of time to really get a feel for things. 
Out of curiosity, though, I looked to see if there were news reports of polls that had been done in previous judicial elections, and lo and behold, there was. In 2008, one of the papers published a poll approximately one month before the election predicting how the election was going to turn out. And we can tell now, with the time machine moved forward, that they were totally wrong. So uh -oh. <laughs> I'm not so sure. We may, not makes, want to, we may not want to use their polling. And it makes me feel their better. Their pollster. That, yeah, it makes me feel better that I haven't gone to have a poll done. I see. Well, for those of you that are interested in our judicial system, this is an opportunity for you to listen up on what it is that Ms. Arias is offering when she gets your vote at the ballot. Now remember, this election is the primary election, and since this show is going to be running uh, after the election, before the election, what we want to do is just go over the process with you so that you understand how important it is for you to vote. Now, I want to call you uh, judge already, candidate for judge, Sigrid. Can you give us a couple of pointers to let people know why it's so important that they vote for you? Most people won't actually encounter a judge personally um, if they're lucky for anything other than a traffic ticket. But many people will at least know, one, know someone close to them who encounters the judicial system and understand for that reason, if for no other, how important it is that we have judges that are fair, careful, impartial, who will take the time to listen to the facts of each particular case. And I've been asked, which are the most important cases you've handled over your career? And my view is every single case is important to the people involved. And if you've ever experienced our judicial system, you know how true that is. What you want in a judge, then, is somebody who, as I said, is going to listen, be fair, be impartial. The California League of Women Voters came up with some criteria for what you might consider in a judicial candidate, because we don't often have those races. Those include integrity. In this respect, I'm very honored to have been endorsed by lawyers who have opposed me in court. When lawyers who've been on the other side of you in a case that is hard fought come back then and endorse you when you're running for judge and say, this is the kind of person that I trust who would be fair and would be a good judge. I take that as a crucial and very um, important endorsement that speaks to my integrity. You need someone with legal experience. I've been in practice in San Francisco almost 30 years and have handled a really wide variety of cases. There's more information on that in my website, which is www.ereasforjudge.com. You want someone who's demonstrated service to the community, which I've done not only through San Francisco La Raza lawyers, but through a two-year hiatus where I devoted two years to teaching junior high school. I've spent years as a coach for the mock trial program for one of our public schools. I am most recently, as um, Paula mentioned earlier, I've dedicated a lot of time to volunteer service as a pro tem judge for the San Francisco Superior Court. My dedication and goal has been to serve the community in this particular way because I think I will be extremely good at it and that it will be a benefit to the community and the way in which I can best serve our community. And we need to also point out that just because this is something that doesn't come up very often, once it does come up, it's important that we elect someone that is a reflection of ourselves and that respect, I mean someone that has been in our community, someone that has served for a very long time, and someone that has had the experience that Sigrid has. So please do take the recommendations seriously about getting out there to vote, because very often what happens is that people get too busy, they don't get a chance to go out and vote, and it's very, very important and critical. And, and as a matter of fact, on the November ballot, we're going to decide whether or not we'll let 16 and 18-year-olds vote, which would be a, a big thrust in our voting. So thank you so much for joining the Paula Fiscal Show. And once again, I want to thank Sigrid for stopping by and sharing with us some of the nuances of running for office and also we listed some of her supporters, but if you want to see all of her supporters, you can check out her website, and your website again is? 
That's www.ereasforjudge.com, and that's I-R-I-A-S-F-O-R-J-U-D-G-E. Thank you. Paula, thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, and please do check out our website, check out our Facebook page, and watch our show on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock. I call that the, the, the other time. And tweet us if you have any topic you'd like to hear about. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank mm -hmm. you.